the wacky world of Multimedia J. It's Cinco de Mayo and all there is to drink in the house is water. Where did I go wrong in life? Well, since I have not much to drink on this Cinco de Mayo besides water, let's mess around with some computers instead and try to salvage the day somehow. My latest new egg box came in. It was a rather bizarre order. Two sticks of RAM, bubble wrapped of course, and a hard drive. Now, uh, if you said something about this stuff going into a bar, people would think you were telling a joke, but anyways. Yeah, I'm a little out of it. I was on my feet all day today doing some uh, work in the warehouse involving mapping out racks and stuff like that for my next access project, so I'm a little exhausted from all the running around, but I need the exercise and I'm going back tomorrow, so ah, it's going to be fun to have two days of nice physical activity and uh, you know, not having to remember to walk the track after work or something like that. All right. So what I have in here is two sticks of RAM, and not even very good RAM either. DDR2 PC6400, the same stuff that's already in this machine. Basically, uh, it's not even the fastest RAM that the motherboard supports either. It's just, uh, what I want to do is bump this thing up to 4 gigs, that little uh, minimum or something like that that I hear you know people want for Windows 7 and stuff like that, and see if it affects the performance in any way. And it's not like it's going to be much of a loss if it doesn't really affect the performance all that much, because this is cheap Kingston memory, $10, $10 a stick, so nothing too exciting. We're basically going to finish filling the RAM sockets in here, get it up to that 4 gig amount, and then just call it with this thing. Now normally I wouldn't even spend money on upgrading anything in an old system like this. I'd rather upgrade my main system and do hand-me-downs to the secondary system. But in this case, not only do we have uh, not only do we have issues with 2 gigs versus 4 gigs of RAM, we also have something to consider here in the fact that this Core 2 Duo is still on par with some budget CPUs out there. I'm glad I read up on what's been going on with low-end CPUs lately because I was about to replace this with more modern components that included like an Athlon Cabini or something like that. When in reality the low-end CPUs today pretty much have the same mathematical capability as this Core 2 Duo if I can say anything right, this Core 2 Duo did, yay, back in 2007. So. Let's do a comparison, actually, to see the effect of the RAM on how much this thing grinds its drive. Now, I've since done a uh, reinstall of Windows 10 technical preview and let it get a bunch of upgrades and updates. So, this thing's had a chance to update, and basically, uh, it doesn't grind as much as it used to. But let's see if the, the peppiness of the system or whatever speeds up when you... Uh when you upgrade the RAM. Now the thing with upgrading RAM in these things is that RAM doesn't actually make your computer faster. It just, it appears to make your computer faster because your computer can do more with electronic memory and not have to mess with far slower virtual memory as much. Of course that's no longer an issue with SSDs. SSDs are a lot faster so virtual memory doesn't slow down as much but you don't want to be putting unnecessary wear and tear on your SSD or even a mechanical hard drive because your system is short on RAM. I remember cheap computers back in the day, they would always be shipped with nowhere near enough RAM, and the hard drive light would just never ever turn off, practically the whole time you were using the machine. So, it was a miserable experience then, and it's a miserable experience now. All right, let's fire this thing up and see what happens. So, well, nothing of course, because I forgot to plug something back in when I switched everything back from the Dell Optiplex 760. Uh, oops. Epic fail. Try number two. Two gigs of RAM. It always helps to plug your computer back in. <laughs> Alright, let's see this thing boot up into Windows 10. Actually, let's roll the camera real time for this. This might be a long video, but I want to compare the experience of booting the system. It should, it should only show my, uh, well, it should automatically log me in in both cases. I think I set that back as well. And there shouldn't be much in terms of updates. Let's just watch this puppy in action as Windows 10 boots up. Yeah, da -da 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 -da. And uh, just watch that hard drive light, see what we get. Hope this isn't too long, droney, or rambly, but uh, anyways. Fans are all the way down. I can always turn them up if things get too hot. And uh, we've gone blank off the login screen here. This is a mechanical hard drive. Now the interesting thing with this whole mechanical hard drive deal is I actually ran a hard drive tester on this 
and the speed actually is similar to the drives that I have in Tuxedo's data array. I do have a new drive, but it's not for this system. The new hard drive is actually for the data array, which will let me take the older one terabyte drive out of Tuxedo and put it in a uh, the older one terabyte drive out of Tuxedo and put it in the plug-in drive, which will free up the 750 gig WD Blue from 2012 to go into this machine and become the new primary drive and we can see if there's a speed increase with newer technology in the hard drive because I think these 250 gig drives are from at least five years ago so given what I dealt with with that Optiplex 760 and it's uh, still being on its original hard drive from the late 2000s maybe there's some kind of firmware thing or something like that but at, ultimately at the end of the day though hard drives are hard drives are hard drives and there we are grinding away still we're into Windows 10, so that's cool. All right, we're into Windows 10, and who oh, did it have to change the wallpaper? Right click, task manager, task manager, task manager, task manager. <laughs> this thing's acting like it normally does. And like computers have done for the last however many years it's been. You know, this is, this is a phenomenon. Uh, this is a phenomenon that I've been dealing with for many years. It's, and it's an old sticking point for these things. The old paradox that newer computers were slower to start up than the older ones, like for example a fast PC in the 90s versus an Apple IIe or something like that. Alright, so already the disk is already slammed all the heck with a vast sucking 8 megs per second. And notice these numbers here at the top, it doesn't really go above 10 megs a second, whereas when we had the SSD in here it was like 40 megs or something along those lines. Alright, cool. So we're getting some sound from the system. We can probably turn things up a bit. So let's see, it is 6.11 p.m. Let's see when the disc finally stops being slammed. All right, it looks like everything in its mother's uncle is done up uploading, updating, whatever, at 6.15 p.m., right on the nose. So basically almost five minutes or so, which basically meant that you probably couldn't start the machine up, do something quick, and then shut it off in the, well, yeah, of course, that was the case back in the pre-SSD days. Oh wait, now something's slamming the drive again, somewhat, but now it's not going past 53%. I really like this, oh wait, never mind, <laughs> spoke too soon, now here comes another round of updates that I did not click on in any way, shape, or form. I wonder if I should try this again when everything's done up updating all over the place. Either way, it's a couple of minutes and that would keep you from being able to just turn your computer on, do something quick, and then shut it off if you needed to. Like if you just needed something quick before going off to work in the morning or something like that. Let's try one more round with uh, two gigs of RAM. And let's see what we have uh, going on here. See if it takes, see if it still takes five minutes to get its updates and stuff. Alright. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble because we have dry heat going on here, so... It, uh... Oh, and I just drank something. Not a good combination, so... Really causes a lot of problems with, like, dry lips and things along those lines. We have this kind of weather going on. 30 degrees on the processor, though. Interesting. Alright, let's see how, the, how much of a grind fest we end up with here. So we're watching the boot as Windows 10 boots up there, and mostly watching this drive light. See what happens with it. It does do automatic log on. So let's see if there's any meaningful difference. Maybe I should time this or something. Nah, no, it's gonna be a hard, it's a hard drive. It's gonna be slow no matter what. We need an, at least an SSHD in order to boot this faster. And even the SSHD would require a couple of boots to really get down, you know, which, what to cache on the boot sequence and stuff like that. What if I should actually turn the fans up? It's all Vantex Stealths in here now, which I'm wondering if I should just replace them with some kind of uh, fractal designs or something, have those be the last 80 mil fans that I ever buy, or just uh, run these Vantex until they seize. Another interesting point about the fan controller in here is I completely forgot, of course it has been 10 years, but I completely forgot that channels 2 and 3 on this fan, on this fan controller, the potentiometers do less because they're made for fans that draw a different amount of current. So fans 1 and 4 actually affect the, uh, the fan channels 1 and 4 actually affect the fans more than 2 and 3 do. So, okay, we're, we're at a desktop right now. So but that's something I forgot about, so I basically have the front fans, I think it's the front fans on fan channel 1, and then the rear fans on channel 4. So, alright, we're grinding away here. So now that we 
maybe don't have as many updates. Ooh, floppy drive. Doo -doo -doo. All right, let's get task manager here. I did just click it. Task manager. Come on now, let's see if we can get the task manager open by 620. All right, let's watch this here. Yep, we're getting slammed. We are getting slammed, all right, at 619. You have new apps that can open web pages. I guess some of the browsers must have updated. All right, well, I wanted to get 620, but uh, close enough. 619, let's see when it stops slamming the disk. Having started it up recently made no difference whatsoever. 623. So basically, the way it works is for the first five minutes or so after you turn your computer on, it basically gets pummeled by every program checking for updates at once before you can actually, you know, use your computer. Earth to software programmers, whose computer is it? Makes me wonder, why can't antivirus programs be programmed to, like, wait 10 minutes after a computer starts up before checking for updates or something? Or, you know, something where you can pick what the delay is for various programs to check for updates. So that way you can spread out all the slamming the disk and maybe be able to actually do something quick and then shut your computer off which was something that was very hard, if not impossible, to do in the days when mechanical drives were the only thing going. This would be what we have to play with here. Nothing too exciting, just some cheap Kingston stuff. Hmm, smaller than the old sticks, though. Either miniaturization or total crap. I don't know. Let's try running off of just the Kingston and see if the thing even boots. Well, the crap sticks are installed. They're flush to the top of the RAM holders. Ugh, not used to seeing cheap memory this small. All right, power is applied anyway, so let's see if we get a postcode. All right. Boots! And then, there were four. It's just weird seeing RAM of two different physical sizes, even though it's the same memory size. Where'd the cords, uh, there we go. Let's apply power to it, see if we get a beep. Now this boots, I'll start it up, shut it down, and then we'll see how we do with the uh, lagginess and stuff like that. Alright, four gigs. Let's look outside here. Postcode? No, no postcode. And it's showing up with four gigs of RAM. So, uh, okay, it boots. Let's see what the difference is after it starts up and shuts down and we'll put the, K the cover back on and all that lovely stuff. Okay, time to start up with four gigs of RAM and see what kind of improvements we get. Now the way this is supposed to work is the computer should not be using the hard drive for virtual memory as much. So there should be a boot and then it should get snappy very quickly because the machine is not using virtual memory as much. If that even was an issue to begin with. I think the bottleneck's the drive actually. One of the options that I have available, too, is I think I still have the other 250 gig drive around somewhere, so I could hook them up in like a RAID uh, forma formation, kind of like a RAID configuration, and stripe to them or something so that it splits the data between them. See how that works. All right, let's try this out. Four gigs of RAM, and let's watch that drive light and see what kind of improvements we get, if any. Doo -da, doo -da, doo -da. There, see? Four gigs of RAM. Ooh. All right, let's watch that drive light. 31 on the processor, but it's 80 out, so it's hotter than it usually is. It's probably a good night to leave the fans going all night. Windows 10. And it's already out. Of course, that's a Windows 8 improvement anyways. All right, signing on. Let's see what happens here. All right, desktop. A little bit peppier anyways. Let's see what we have. wonder if the RAM lets me uh, improve things a little. All right, let's watch Task Manager. It is 6.46 right now. Let's see when the drive stops getting slammed. There we go. 6.47. Much better. Or maybe not. <laughs> there it goes again. <laughs> but it's not staying up there, so that's good. So there we, there we go, right there. So memory does have an effect, but it doesn't mean that it makes the computer faster, it just means that it uses the hard drive less. What I'd still like to do, though, is maybe set up a... Uh, this thing does have a RAID controller on one of its uh, SATA things on the motherboard, so I'm wondering if I could set up some kind of RAID stripe type, you know, split the load between two drives type RAID setup, and uh, between... Because I, I think I still have the 250 gig 
drive that went with this drive somewhere around there. Or maybe let's compare two old drives with one newer drive and see what we get in terms of speed and throughput and stuff like that with a disc checker. Either way, this should help with the grind fest anyways, although there still is a grind fest. Now we're talking like two minutes or something instead of instead of like five minutes or something like that. So there is still a grind fest, but it's been shortened. The way to eliminate it is to increase disk bandwidth so it can load stuff faster. So let me try a RAID array with two crappy drives versus a newer, significantly newer, WD Blue and see what we get for speed and improvement and stuff like that. This story is going to be continued, folks, but it's good to see that the Silver Bullet has a bit of a performance boost, at least when it first starts up. I don't miss mechanical drives, though. Till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by. Gixaram. Now let's see what we have uh, going on here. So it takes, let's watch this. Right. It takes five minutes to get updates and stuff. Get it then. Alright. Yeah, I'm having a little yeah, trouble yeah, because yeah, we have yeah, drive there. So you have four gigs of RAM. So. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well, let's watch that drive. Like, not a good combination. So. Really? Oh, there's a lot of problems so with like the drive. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, hotter than it usually is. is. We have this kind of weather. Probably a good night to leave the fans going all night. on the processor windows. 10. Alright, let's see. And it's already at Ryan Fest. That's in Windows 8 improvements, anyways. So we're watching the boot signing on. Windows 10 seems up there. We're mostly watching this drive lights and see what happens. It does do automatic log on. Let's see if there's any meaningful difference. Maybe I should time this or something. Nah, no, it's gonna be a hard it's a hard drive. It's gonna be slow no matter what. We need at least an SSHD in order to boot this faster. And even the SSHD would require a couple of boots to really get down, you know, which what to cache and the boot sequence and stuff like that. I should actually turn the fans up. It's all Vantex Stealths in here now, which I'm wondering if I should just replace them with some kind of uh, fractal designs or something. Have those be the last 80 mil fans that I ever buy. Or just uh, run these Vantex until they seize. Another interesting point about the fan controller in here is I completely forgot, of course it has been 10 years, but I completely forgot that channels 2 and 3 on this fan, on this fan controller, the potentiometers do less because they're made for fans that draw a different amount of current. So fans 1 and 4 actually affect the, uh, the fan channels. Ah!